Welcome to Pillar Shell Saturday. All right. Good to see you all here today. I'm guessing everybody's here because they like Active Directory, right? All right. I do have a giveaway. I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way up front. A little train signal, free training card. Who can tell me the name of the old school command line utility that you use to work with the net logon service? Was not net dom. NL test. NL test. Hey, there we go. All right. NL test. Very handy. Okay. I also have some business cards up here later if anybody wants a, a business card with the information. So my name's Ashley McGlone. That's Mr. Ashley McGlone. I always like to put that on there. You know, Gone with the Wind started here right in Atlanta, right? My mom liked Gone with the Wind. There's this dude named Ashley in there, right? But there's a little known fact for you. The guy that played Ashley Wilkes in Gone with the Wind, they had to find a guy with a girl's name to play a guy with a girl's name. His real name was Leslie Howard. <laughs> Go figure. All right. So uh, here's my uh, Twitter handle, GoTPFE, my blog, aka.ms slash GoTPFE. All the slides and demos that I'm about to show you are waiting on you to go download out there right now. So you can go uh, find that after the session. All right, so let's get started. Uh, it's time to part with Blanky. Anybody bring their Blanky this morning? Going to rip it out of your hands. All right, we don't need those old command line utilities that we used to, we've leaned on for so many years, especially when it comes to Active Directory. So today I'm going to show you what new PowerShell features we have to do with uh, Active Directory so we don't have to, to use those old things. So this is the applied track. That means I'm not going to be doing any major product announcements, but I'm going to use the existing functionality in the PowerShell that you have to show you how to use some cool features to help you. I'm also going to be keeping this around a two to 300 level, so it's not too scary. All right, Halloween's really close, but I'm not going to scare you too bad. And what I want you to come away with this is to see how Active Directory PowerShell can replace those old school command line utilities. I want to inspire you to use PowerShell for Active Directory, and then I want you to go tell your friends about Active Directory PowerShell and get the word out there. And then we have a crazy fun finale planned. This is a demo that you've not seen at TechEd or anywhere else. You're going to see it here first. This is the first place I've ever done it. So cross your fingers, say a prayer, and let's hope that it all works. All right. So uh, ADCMD, what are some of the old command line tools that we used to use with Active Directory? Okay, and what happened to them uh, now that we're, they're in 2012 server? So DC Promo is entirely replaced. Uh, Dean Wells, who's the program manager for AD, said they took DC Promo and they stood it up in a corner and they shot it <laughs> repeatedly. All right, so it's gone, it's done, and we're going to see that here in the demo today. Rep Admin is about half and half. Some of the things you can do with PowerShell, other things you probably still need to lean on Rep Admin for. Uh, DC Diag is not on the roadmap for replacement. You can get some of the information that you need and kind of code your own version of some of those tests in DC Diag. Uh, all the DS commandlets, DS get, DS set, DS mod, DS query, those are really easy to do in PowerShell now. We're going to look at that. Uh, DNS CMD, if we have time at the end, I'll hit a few of the DNS commandlets. We've got a new module, the DNS server module. That includes 100, and 100 commandlets for DNS server and then a DNS client module for 17 commandlets. So it's fantastic. So DNS CMD, you don't need that anymore. I've done my time with WMI and <coughs> DNS CMD, but you don't need that either. Uh, CSVDE, the classic dump all the objects out in a CSV file, okay? Uh, we're going to look at that today. All we have to do is say get AD object and pipe that to export CSV. So we're going to do some demos on some of these old tools that you used to use in Active Directory. Um, so the first question is, though, why would we not want to use those old commandlets? All right, we got flat text; they're not objects. All right, PowerShell is all about objects. So now we got this rich uh, object model. It's going to let us, uh, instead of having to peel apart all those text outputs, now we can just use the rich PowerShell objects. We also have the availability issue. Was that old command line tool in adminpack.msi or sysinternals or the resource kit? 
And then where are the bits to install that? And when I walk up to a server, I don't know what's there. Now I've got PowerShell out of the box. That's what's hot with PowerShell. Uh, common syntax. What was this with those old utilities? What was the switch to specify the server name? Was it slash s or dash e? What did we use there? Now it's common with PowerShell. And finally, it's job security. All right, you can keep using those old tools, but the guys that are going to pass you up in the department are going to be the ones that are the, the go to guy for PowerShell. And that's who you want to be. And ladies, you can be the go to gal. All right, so uh, that's enough PowerPoint. Let's do some PowerShell. Uh, let's get in and actually do the stuff. Let's uh, flip over to our VMs here. If I can get back to the right window. Okay, uh, very quickly, how many have used the Active Directory module for PowerShell? Okay, good. Most of the people in here. Import module, Active Directory. If you're on 2008 R2, if you're on 2012, you just take off and start running because it's automatically imported in the background. So I don't want to um, revisit too much of the basics. But basically, uh, get command Active Directory module here. Uh, we run this line. We see we've got a ton of new commandlets automatically imported in the background. 147 commandlets, 2012R2. If we look at the deployment module where DC Promo now lives, we've got 10 commandlets in there. Now, here's a little trivia question for you. What is the longest named Active Directory PowerShell commandlet? Let's find out. Check it out. How many characters are in the name of these commandlets? Right there. Get dash AD domain controller password replication policy usage. I think that should take the prize for the longest commandlet name. So you saw it here in the Active Directory module. All right. So we have tons of commandlets in here. This one particularly is for read-only domain controllers to see which, which accounts have been exposed on that read-only DC. All right, so we've got a lot of fun stuff in there. This is all made possible by the Active Directory web service running in the background. Okay, so uh, if you're, uh, how many are using Windows 7 in your environment at your company? Okay, yeah, a lot of people. All right, there's a blog post out there, and uh, don't, I try not to give too many commercials, but right here, ADPS 2012, aka.ms ADPS 2012. I've got a blog post that shows you how to use the newest 2012 commandlets from your Windows 7 machine that can't run that version of the RSAT. So go check that out afterwards if you're stuck on Windows 7. But in here, in, we've got commandlets like get ad domain, get ad forest, gives us our FISMO roles and all those properties and things like that, get ad user. So that's uh, just a really quick overview. Uh, of the basic Active Directory module. I don't want to spend too much time there, but I want us to look at these old DS commands now. So if I look at the help on DS uh, whatever, here's DS get, DS get computer, DS get contact, DS get subnet, you get the idea. Now we've got get dash AD user, get dash AD computer, so forth. So a lot of these old command lists that we used to use then. Uh, we can replace with these new ones. So here's an old one, uh, DS query, to find all the inactive accounts that have been inactive for four days. Here's the new version, search AD account. I'm going to tell it to only look for computer accounts that are inactive, and I give it a time span in this in very precise terminology here of four days. Now that command that's going to come back not with flat text, it's going to come back with rich object-oriented data. So now I've got not only the distinguished name path of that object, I also have that last logon date and a lot of other juicy data that I would rather see when I get that data back. Okay, I got DS query right here. I want to get a list of everybody that starts with Joe in their name. Instead, I'm going to do that with get AD user, uh, where name is like Joe. That's my filter. And then I've got my properties there. Uh, display name and department, drop it down. It looks pretty much the same on the output, but the difference you'll see is that now we have object-oriented column data that we can reference in an object model. So that's really handy. Uh, and there's a whole lot of these. Uh, DSGet, for example. Uh, I want to see group membership for Andrew Lan here. So I do a query. There's a list of all his group members with DSGet with the member of switch. Now I'm going to look at get AD user and look at the property member of. And then I'm going to expand that property here with select object. 
and it gives me the groups. Now, there's one subtle difference is it doesn't include the primary group, the main users, so I have to query that separately on another attribute. All right, so we bust that out. It's more flexible now in PowerShell. Uh, DS add. Let's say I want to add an account, John Doe here. So I'm going to run that one. And so I add John Doe in here. I've got some parameters. His employee ID, his password. Um, password never expires. And set to no. All right. Disabled no. So he's an enabled user. Here's the same thing with new AD user. Adding Jane Doe right beside John. I'm going to run that line. And so now we've added an account. And that line here, we've got the password specified, enabled is true. All right, so again, just one to one parity with these old commandlets. So now I'm going to do a quick query get ad user, filter name, surname equals doe. So that gets the last name Jane and John Doe. Now I'm going to modify these accounts. I'm going to tell uh, John Doe that he's disabled. All right, same thing with ad PowerShell, disable ad account. And now he's done. All right. Down, down here at the bottom, DSRM to remove. No prompt. Says we don't want to say yes, I'm sure. And in PowerShell, we use that built-in parameter, the uh, confirm switch here to do the same thing. So I'm going to say confirm is false when we delete Jane Doe here. And now those accounts are gone. So that's a really quick view of the DS commandlets. How many of you use those, uh, the DES command line utilities, all right? So now you've got the AD command list. Very easy, uh, simple to do. I want to move on to something that's a little bit more tricky, though, and that's DS ACLs. Uh, anybody use DS ACLs? All right. Have you ever wanted to set permissions on an OU or an object in Active Directory? You're going to use DS ACLs. It'll report to you and show you the permissions. So if I run that line, and I look at my output down here, DS Ackles has a lot of ugly text and there's no way really to parse that. It's just row after row, it's not really that easy to parse, okay? What I'm gonna do now though is I'm gonna use a new commandlet called get-acl. It's actually, it's not a new commandlet, it's been there for a while. And I'm gonna set up my OU path here and then I'm gonna grab an AD object of that OU and I'm going to look at the NT security descriptor. Now this is one way to do it. It's, what, it's actually what get ACL does in the background. It looks at the NT security descriptor attribute. So I'm going to run this real quick. And the output, oh nice. <laughs> oh man. That is sweet. Oh here, here's, and now wait, wait, wait. New ISE feature, if you didn't know that, it's going to resume the session. Hey, you were working on some things when it crashed. All right, so now it's going to bring me right back and we'll keep going. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was on purpose. Yeah, yeah. I totally meant that. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the NT security descriptor uh, here. There we go. And this gives us a ton of ACL, or actually ACEs, access control entries and the access control lists, a lot more data, it's object oriented and it's much more detailed. I can really work with this now. I couldn't really work with that DS ACLs output. So uh, the other thing you'll notice is these odd GUID numbers in here. I've got a blog post out there where I talk about how to dump all the permissions on your OUs and it dumps it all into a report for you and I go into that post and explain more about what that is. But uh, the easier way is to do get ACL and I'll do it on that OU. Notice I have to put AD colon slash in the path to get that to work with the provider drive. There are a couple different properties that show me permissions. There's access to string, access and SDDL. Access to string is kind of like that old DS ACLs output. Um, access is really what I want. That's a collection of Active Directory access rules. And then the SDDL is that scary looking code down there for the security descriptor definition language. This is all documented pretty well out on MSDN and I've got a blog post that does it. So what I want to look at really is this access property. And I'm going to pipe that to outgrid view because outgrid view is your best friend. If you haven't used that before, OutGrid views the ticket. So let's take a look. Now instead of that old ugly text, 
I have a sortable graphical list. It's okay if you applaud and cheer right now, all right? I have a sortable graphical list with columns of data that I can filter and sort uh, automatically right here. Just uh, click on it and sort. Let's say I want to just find the denies. I type deny, finds the one item right there, deny. Everyone delete. That's the delete protection, all right? That is uh, what we're talking about now with Active Directory and PowerShell. So uh, the next thing here is uh, DS ACLs. And DS ACLs, we've got uh, to grant permissions. This is what it would look like to uh, allow An Andrew Lan uh, full control of that OU for the user objects uh, right here on this line. And now it's a little bit ugly in PowerShell. Uh, I'm going to put a blog post out on this pretty soon. But uh, what you have to do is you have to use a .NET method to set the permissions. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a get ACL on that OU. And then I'm going to grab the SID for this user that I'm going to assign permissions. Then I'm going to create a user GUID. Uh, basically, this is a GUID that identifies user objects. When you ever go set permissions on an OU and you look at all those millions of different combinations of ways you can set the permissions, that's why it's not exactly as clean as we'd like. But that's the GUID that tells me to use user objects. And then I've got to create a new ACL object here with an access directory rule. And then once I create that rule that says allow all descendants for user objects for that person, I'm going to add that rule to the ace object that we just captured. And then I'm going to set that. And so that applies now Andrew Lan on there. I've got some other examples here in the script that you can download later. Uh, here I'm going to find every reference to Andrew Lan. And there I go. All those rows that we just saw in the permissions, I just was able to pipe that to a filter and a where and find where Andrew Lane was granted access on the OU. So this is very rich, very powerful uh, with this new object model. And then if I want to remove those, I'm going to use the remove access method and simply revoke his permissions <laughs> to that OU then. So that's a really quick on DS ACLs. There's a lot more to that. Take some study. Uh, go read my blog post on the OU permissions. It'll explain some of that in more detail. And I've got a lot to go over here. So let's hit the CSVDE. Anybody use CSVDE before? All right. So it's how you can export and import uh, accounts. So over here, I've got a 2008R2 domain controller. And I'm going to dump out a list of all the accounts that have the given name of that starts with V. So anybody that has V in their name, and I know that's kind of small text. Let's ramp it up a little bit here. So I'm going to export that. And because it's, I have to select the whole line. I'm so used to PowerShell for three. So there we go. It exported those objects. I can do the exact same thing with PowerShell. Uh, import module because it's a 2008 R2 box. Get AD user where their name starts with V. Here's the properties that I want. Export that to CSV. Bada bing, bada boom. Same thing. We're importing the module, exporting that. And now if I open those files side by side, here we go. Here's the first file. I've got the name, all the attributes in there. That's the actual CSV file we just dumped out. I look at the next one. And there's the CSV file that we just dumped out. It's added a few extra things in there for us, but it's all the same data, essentially. And when I look at this uh, in Explorer, go out here and grab my CSV file that I just created right here, csvde.txt. And I can open that up, take a look. Looks like a CSV file. What I'm going to do now, live, before your very eyes, I'm going to copy this file go over to another VM, a totally different domain, totally different forest, and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paste this file in. I'm going to delete the one that I had from the other day. And I'm going to paste this file over here. Totally different forest now, and now I'm going to come over here and import those users that I just exported from the other forest. And so here we go. Uh, we've already looked at the contents of the file. Let's come on down here and let's do it right here. We're going to say import CSV for this uh, CSV file. And I'm going to do one quick change right here on line 48. The 
SN attribute, the property, needs to be uh, modified to say surname when it comes in because that's what the AD commandlet's expecting to see. So I'm going to use the old select object to, with an expression to rename that column as it comes in. And then I'm going to pipe that straight into a new AD user, drop it into migrated OU, give it a default password, and enable that account. So here we go. We'll uh, run these lines. Doop, doop, doop. That was pretty fast. Hey, wait, it didn't tell me anything. That's because PowerShell just does it. It doesn't say, hey, it's all done now. It just says, hey, it's done. No errors. Okay. So now let's take a look and filter and uh, query for those accounts that begin with V. Hey, there they are. Now they're over here in the new forest. And notice the distinguished name path says Coho Vineyard instead of Wingtip Toys. So I've completely migrated that select batch of users from one domain to another in just a few minutes using PowerShell commandlets. In the past, we would have used CSVDE or uh, to export and then CSVDE-I to import. And now we can see that it's all very easy with PowerShell. Uh, how does that handle group membership? Group membership, it takes a little bit more work to get that part, but yes, you can do that as well. All right. Uh, moving right along. Okay, so now I'm going to come down here and just uh, remove those accounts to reset and move on to rep admin. All right, over here in rep admin now. Okay, how many have used rep admin? All right, most of you. So rep admin is the Swiss Army knife for the Active Directory admin. This is where I'm going to go look at all kinds of juicy data. I'm going to look at all the connections that I have set up for replication on that box. I can look at the replication health, how many errors I've seen recently, and so forth. I'm going to use this to inspect objects and do some really neat forensic investigation. And I'm going to do a quick demo of that now and how you can use rep admin and the new commandlets uh, to do that. So the first thing to understand is that there is not a complete 100% parity with rep admin. We have a lot of the features in PowerShell, but not all of them. Uh, but I want to demo some of the really cool ones here. So I got uh, show REPL here, a very popular one, going to show me all the replication uh, uh, status across the forest here. Now instead, uh, oh, here's one little tip for you. If you want to continue to use rep admin, okay, there's a middle ground here. There's a CSV switch. And this is really cool, because what I can do is I can take that command line output, that CSV data, and pipe it to convert from CSV in PowerShell, and dynamically make it into a PowerShell object from the old commandlet. And then, of course, it goes out grid view, because that's where I can actually see it instead of all those you know, wrapping lines in the console. So let's run this one. It takes the same output now with a CSV option from rip admin, gives it to me in a really nice, easy to sort and filter grid view over here. Now, let's uh, look at uh, a better way to do this with PowerShell. So the get-ad replication partner metadata. It's not quite the longest commandlet name. We saw that already. So this is a pretty long one, but we're going to tell it to look at the whole scope of the forest, uh, all partitions, in and, out, in and outbound partners, and we're going to take a look at that data now and pipe it to outgrid view. And it's mostly the same data. It's got some additional columns, which gives us more to work on. But you can see we get pretty similar output there. So uh, show REPL and then AD replication partner metadata. Now, if you're trying to take notes, don't worry about it. I've got a four-page handout on my blog that's going to document every one of these switches and their equivalents in PowerShell. So don't, you don't have to sit there and write this whole session, OK? Uh, there's a four-page handout for you on the blog, OK? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so get AD replication failure. This is really what we want to do when we're troubleshooting. We want to find where the problem is. Well, I've listed out a number of different examples of the syntax here. You can set the scope to an individual server, a domain, a forest, you name it, even a site, and then you can 
query for replication failures. Now, in my little lab here with two DCs, there's not been any replication failures in the last hour, so not much to report, okay? But again, that's PowerShell. If there's no errors, it's not going to say anything. Okay. Uh, show up to dateness vector. You ever heard of this up to dateness vector? Right? How did when two domain controllers replicate, how do they know what to send? They yeah. use Right. All right. They use USNs, update sequence numbers, and they maintain this table that says the last time I replicated with you, I used USN 1000. So I know I've already got up to 1000. Give me everything greater than 1000, and it sends me that stuff. So that's how domain controllers talk and keep track of what they've replicated and what they haven't. There's a little more to it than that, but that's the, the nutshell. Okay. So we can look at this up to dateness vector table. In this case, uh, looking at the partition here of the domain partition and I can see that uh, there's some old dates in here from old domain controllers and these old IDs but there are some that actually have names on them because they still exist in the domain this is what you would see in your production environment as well and so now I'm going to look at the same thing and I'm going to put it into uh, Active Directory PowerShell instead get dash ad replication up to dateness vector table <laughs> looking at those long commandlet names now all right this is, tab. Yeah, tab complete, but it's going to take you a while to tab there. There probably are. I haven't looked at them. We can just look at the commandlet help and see if the aliases are there. But so here's the same thing. Now though, instead of wrapping columns, it's hard to read in the console. I've got a nice grid view, sort, filter. There's the data I want. Okay, makes it really easy to see. All right, next, uh, show connections. What are all the connections that I have to this box? Replication connections. Now I just say get dash ad replication. Notice they all start like that. Get dash ad replication uh, connection. So this shows me the replication connections to that server. I can see I've got one other partner out there connected. All right. Uh, keeping things moving along here. Get ad replication site link. Finally, and when we went from 2008 R2. To 2012, we added some new commandlets for subnets and sites and site links. Nice. We could do it, but we had to code it by hand before. Now we have built-in commandlets for it. You can see I've got a site link out there that's got a 15-minute interval on the frequency. Well, I'm going to look at uh, attribute metadata here, and I want to show you this real quick. This is your forensics in rep admin now with get ad app replication attribute metadata so here's what this means has anybody ever come to you and said who changed this attribute or this yeah. value okay <laughs> and when I'll take it by the laughter I assume you all have okay so here's how to find that it's out of the box you don't have to pay for some third-party tool we've been able to do this for years okay there's a, a rep admin switch called uh, show obj meta show object replication metadata that tells you when that object's been updated well here's the attribute name attribute current value and then there's a ton of other uh, values over here including let's say we look at uh, I'm gonna sort this and find the description and over here on the right side I can see that this description version number is 16 that means it's been changed 15 times after the initial creation of the object the last time it was changed was on the 24th at 2.29 p.m. and it originated from CVDC1. That's the domain controller that set that change. So then I go look at the event logs on that box and look at the security logs and see who used their permissions to update an object then. All right, so we can do that now. Uh, so I want to show you an example. Here I'm going to set the, a uh, different value on that description. Remember the last number was 16. I'm going to come down here and check both of my domain controllers and notice they haven't replicated yet. They've got a 15 minute replication interval. Different zero and different underscore, two different values. I could go in here with rep admin and tell it to replicate. I could tell it to replicate a single object. Instead, I'm going to come down here and use PowerShell to say, uh, where is it? Force replication right here. Sync dash AD object from domain controller to domain controller, the guest account going to force that replication and compare the values hey look now they match so I forced replication for that object 
And now I'm going to look at the metadata on that object and find the description. Now, I didn't have to force replication to show it, but over here you can see now the version instance is 17 on that object. That means somebody changes just since we looked at it last. And where did it change? When did it change? It changed at 1026, 1058, and that was on the DC CVDC1. It was me in the kitchen with a candlestick. That's right. right. All right. Now we know. So you can do your own forensics. Yes. So you're specifying a server. Do you need the ADRP transfer metadata? So does that mean you're potentially going to have to check a bunch of different servers to get around? Well, the reason I'm doing it is because I've targeted that domain controller, and I know the other one's not replicated yet. So I want to make sure I'm checking the same DC every time I, I'm because if I accidentally query the other one, it doesn't know that it changed yet. So I want to make sure I'm targeting in one DC. But you don't have to do that necessarily. It just depends on your scenario. All right. So now, cross your fingers. Say a prayer. Here comes DC promo. All right. Uh, I have a whole post out there on this called uh, Touch-Free Domain Controllers. Touch-Free DC Promo in Server 2012. And it's going to go, all the scripts are out there as well as today's posts. Uh, but now what I want to do is I want to kick off a demo and then we're going to watch the script run. All right. Now, um, this is the part where I told you we've never seen this done before at any other place. So if everything works correctly, I'm about to show you how to promote a domain controller from your phone. <laughs> all right. What do you think? You want to try that? All right. I've got my cell phone here, my, my Windows phone. It's got a little camera stand. And I'm going to uh, open up my phone. And I've got a webcam set up here so that we can uh, take a look at this. Uh, if I can find my pointer. Uh, where we are? Where are we? There we go. Okay. There we go. All right. Here's my phone. Right there, you can see all my redneck cousins on Facebook um, <laughs> with my status updates from Windows Phone. All right. So I'm going to come down here, and I've got a shortcut to PowerShell Web Access. Now, hey, look at our stock price. That looks pretty good. Um, so PowerShell Web Access. OK, I've got this warning. Hey, you shouldn't trust this guy's website. Uh, that's because when you set up PowerShell Web Access for the test certificate, you're going to get that certificate prompt. All right, so I'm going to get past that. OK. Now, continue to website. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Here we go. All right. PowerShell Web Access on the phone. All right. Now, this uh, I have a whole blog post that says how to do PowerShell on your phone. So I just took those two blog posts and I crammed them together to say, how do we do a DC promo from your phone? All right. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, what I'm going to do here is this is the hard part. I've got to type. So uh, I'm going to put in my credentials, Coho Vineyard. I don't use Contoso, it's, it's too popular. Uh, administrator, I always have to type this long thing. All right, now I'm going to put in my password. And I'm not showing that on the webcam on purpose, right? All right. Yeah, who wants to break into Coho Vineyard anyway? Right, Coho Vineyard. They, they might get like hack some wine bottles or something. All right, so here we go. I'm in PowerShell Web Access on my phone. I've got my credentials put in there. I'm going to hit enter. All right. And it's signing in. I'm actually remoting in to the domain controller from my phone now. On Wi Fi. On Wi Fi. Uh, I could be at home in my recliner. Drinking beer. Watching Duck Dynasty, <laughs> you know, and I've got my tablet, my phone, whatever fruit robot Windows type device you want to use. As long as you got a browser, does HTTPS and JavaScript and cookies, you're good. All right. So here I am. I mean, anybody can promote a domain controller from the office, but now you can promote one from the recliner watching Duck Dynasty. Oh, in, donut. Yeah. All right. Eating a donut. All right. Multitasking. So here's what I'm going to do. I've already set up a deployment script to deploy this domain controller. And what we're going to do is we're going to let it run in the background while we talk through the script. So uh, let me pull up 
the actual script that we're going to use over here. All right, so this is the script that we're going to run. And I'm going to go ahead and kick it off because it's going to take it a few minutes to actually promote the domain controller. So what I'm going to do in here. What version of DCR are you on? Well, I've got a couple in my lab. I've got a 2012 and a 2012 R2. So if you can see what I'm doing here, I'm in the PowerShell console. I'm type D-I-R, enter. Look at that. All right, here we go, running. There's a directory list on that server. And I've got a script here that I prepared. Imagine that, uh, DC promo up and down. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run. It's gone from the run command. It's still in PowerShell. What's that? Well, because, you know, the, you know they're officially they say DC promo is gone, you know, because now you do it through server manager. Yeah. Oh, now watch this. I'm also going to use uh, tab complete. Tab complete. And uh, it's going to find the script name, type it in for me. So here in the little, uh, I've got tab button and submit button there. So, so I'm not using DC promo. I'm using a PowerShell script that does not call DC promo.exe. Okay, I'm going to show you the script here in just a second. So now we're going to run this. And it's going to go hit a member server. Oh, look, once more credentials. I'm going to type those in again. All right, it's almost touch free. All right, there's my credentials. And I'm going to hit enter. All right. All right, loading the Active Directory module. There we go, collecting data. And basically, what we're doing is we're going to this other server. Now, I'm just going to let this run. Okay, while well, we talk through the code down here. So we got the starting installation. It's actually installing the Active Directory domain services role on a remote server. I logged into DC1 and now I'm promoting a member server one. So I've got three different things. I'm sitting on the couch with my phone, my tablet, watching Duck Dynasty. Hey, let's promote a domain controller tonight while we're watching the show. See what Jace would think about that. And so then we're uh, starting this installation. Now I'm remoted in back into the office. I've targeted a domain controller simply because in my lab, that's where my modules are, and that we could get other ways to do that. But now it's actually going over remotely to a different server. Now, in the old days, DC Promo EXE, you had to be on the box to run it. Right? You don't have to do that anymore. Now you can do remote domain controller promotion. So not only am I promoting a remote DC, I'm actually installing the role first remotely and then doing the promotion remotely. So in our output here, what you saw was this output shows what's, what roles were currently installed previously on that server, what domain controllers were currently in the forest. So we did not have that domain controller. Okay, so we're continuing with the installation of the role. So down here, this is the actual script that's running right now. I got a credential, we saw we typed that in. I echoed the date. Oh, look at that, hey, there's a tweet mentioned. Cool. Um, all right, so it's still running. Get AD domain controller, we did that. We imported the server manner module, which we really didn't have to because we're in 2012 now. Uh, get Windows feature, we just wanted to see what was already on there. We are installing the Windows feature, AD domain services, all right. And there goes the DC promo kicking off, uh, if you're watching in the little animation there. And now we do get Windows feature to see uh, what features are installed. All right, now here comes the fun part. Big thing to notice, right? Uh, so watch that when you download this later. So here we go. Uh, invoke command. Invoke command uses PowerShell remoting port 5985, WSMAN, WinRM, whatever you want to call it. Goes out to that remote machine. It says, do this. And it all executes over there. So when it does that, what we're going to tell it to do is a DC promo. So we're going to invoke a command now. Now that the role's installed over there, we're going to go do the DC promo over there as well. So we're going to invoke a command against that server with this script block. Import module is optional. I just left it in there for good taste. Uh, install AD domain control. ADDS domain controller is the new commandlet. And we tell it all these options. No global catalog is false. Don't you love that kind of logic? Yes, it's a global catalog. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we got uh, create the DNS delegation, all that jazz. It's still running up there, okay? Database path, domain name, install DNS. We put that on there. All the usual stuff you would specify in the GUI, clicking next, next, next. Now, how many have done a 2012 DC promo? All right, so at the end, it cranks out the little script. All right, you just copy that script and modify it for your needs. Okay, that's all we did here. And we come down here, it's going to be in the Ohio site. Safe mode admin password. Don't try this at home. <laughs> Don't embed your password into the script. But that's what I did down here. It's a convert to secure string so I could put a plain text password in there so that my demo runs touch free. Hey, look, our domain controller promotion, if you check the watch the window there, securing Kerberos is still going. And the little progress percentage is kind of overriding the text. Hey, look, we're uh, configuring services, replicating things. Cool, it's still going on that remote machine from my phone miles away. All right, I could be at the soccer field with the kids. I could be out on the town just promoting a domain controller because I can. All right, it's done, it's finished. So now, um, one little thing, oh, 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 you gotta see this part right here, right here. This cost me a couple hours of sleep. Um, dollar using is a new feature in PowerShell 3, okay? Because in PowerShell 2, and you did an evoke command against, hey, look, it's restarting. Look at the little spinner, isn't that cute? All right. Um, <laughs> so we got uh, dollar using says, take a variable from my local session and teleport it over the matter transfer stream across the teleporter to that remote machine and use it in that remote context. So dollar using, because if I just put dollar cred in here from those credentials I typed in earlier, it has no idea what dollar cred is on that remote machine because it doesn't exist over there. So I have to say dollar using to, to teleport that variable over there along with the dude in the red shirt that doesn't come back from the planet. <laughs> All right. So here we go, we're restarting. Now over here I told it to uh, no reboot on completion is true. I told it not to reboot because I wanted to manage the reboot myself using PowerShell. Now we can do a restart dash computer and tell it to wait for PowerShell. So I told it to restart that remote computer and to wait for PowerShell to come back up. So it's not only is it just rebooted, but it's actually interacting and I can talk to it again. And I told it to restart and then when that's done, I'm going to dump out a list here. It's almost 80%. It's waiting for something scrolled off the screen there. So in just a second, then it's going to do a get AD domain controller query to verify that that domain controller is now added into the forest. So we've already run DC promo remotely against that box from my phone watching Duck Dynasty at home in the recliner. All right. And then it's going to run the query to get a list of domain controllers. All right, here it goes. Let's watch for the big finish. There it is. Hey, whoo! New domain controller in the forest. All right. From the phone, PowerShell Web Access and Active Directory PowerShell. Okay, great combination. So there we go. We see that it finished a few minutes later. Now, we don't have time to do it right now, but, uh, oh, wait a minute. You know what? I promoted the wrong domain controller. Oh, man. I got, I got to take it back down. Watch this. Uh, I'm gonna do. Uh, real, we've got we've got a few minutes left in the session here. All right. I got another script handy. Uh, let's call this one uh, DC Promo Dash D Tab Complete with the little button in the screen. There we go. Can everybody see that? Okay. Now I promoted the wrong domain controller because I was trying to do it on a commercial break and I wasn't paying attention, I got the wrong one. So I'm gonna decom de this DC right now, uh, running my DC promo down, and I've gotta put in my password again, of course. BR549, all right. Anybody catch that reference? Yeah. All right, all right. My parents forced me to watch Hee Haw as a kid. All right. Yeah, so here we go. Yeah. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to remove this DC. The same thing, prompt for credentials. We're going to get a list of domain controllers in the forest. There we see it. Hey, look, we're calling the uh, the thing here. We the thing. Yeah, uninstall ADDS domain controller. Passing in a new password for the local admin account. 
going to demote any operations roles. We're passing in the credential again with dollar using right there, and we're going to force it. Okay, so now validating the environment, blah, blah, blah. We've added a lot of stuff. There's a test dash ADDS to make controller install uh, commandlet now that you can test to make sure everything's ready without actually doing it. And then when you actually go to do it, it actually checks the environment, makes sure everything's complete and ready to go before it does the promo. All right, so now uh, we've got three DCs up there. It'll take it a couple more minutes. We're going to DC promo down, remove this domain controller. Then once we remove it, uh, it's automatically going to reboot. Now, when I was writing this script, uh, again, I lost a couple hours of sleep so that you don't have to. I put it all out there on the blog so you can go get, download this and use this to do it yourself. All right, so we're starting the uninstall up there. Um, one of the things I realized was when I do an uninstall, it's going to force the reboot. So I couldn't tell it to let me control the reboot. It was just going to do it automatically. So what I did was I put this little uh, sleep. I'll let it sleep for five seconds once it's going down. I'm going to sleep the script for five seconds. And then I'm going to do this little loop right here. Do into, and this is what the restart dash wait for does. I'm going to start sleep one second. Every second, I'm going to try to do a WMI call to that box. And when I finally get a response from that box on WMI, I know it's back up. And then I can continue because once I DC promo down, I still have to remove the role that's installed on the box. Okay? Yes? You know what? Uh, in PowerShell version 3, there's this automatic reconnection feature. If you lose a remote session, mm -hmm. it's going to attempt to reconnect that for four minutes automatically. So if you can't, uh, let's say your battery dies on your tablet, it takes you a minute to go plug it in, all of a sudden you come back up, you know, you're good. So, all right. So here we go, uninstalling domain controlling. You see a little animation there, Active Directory services on partitions. <laughs> Sucking all that data down, stopping the net logon service, just removing that domain controller role. And then down here, we're going to restart the computer. Uh, so here's what we've got to do. We've got to uninstall the features. So we've got to uninstall the AD domain services role, uh, the DNS, the RSAT for AD tools, and the RSAT for AD PowerShell. We're going to uninstall those roles and features on the box against that, including the management tools, no confirm. And then once that's done, you have to uh, do another restart, and we're going to wait for PowerShell. This time we can control that restart. So we've got to restart the box twice to remove that role and everything. Uh, so there we go. At the, when it's all done, I'm going to query for a list of features again, just to verify that those features and roles are no longer installed on the box. And then we're going to query again for a list of domain controllers in the forest to see if it's still there, if we can find it. And then we'll just tag the date time when it's done. So, like I said, it takes it just a few minutes for this demo to run through. We're finished uninstalling the domain controller. And actually, right now is the involuntary reboot. So it's going down, and it'll be coming back up any minute. And right here, collecting data, that's where we do the get Windows feature remotely. So it's collecting that feature data. Now it's going to go through and remove those features on the domain controller. Okay. So not only in this session have we saw how to use CSVDE and Rep Admin and DC Promo, all that we've also got a quick demo on PowerShell Web Access. Okay. So enabling us in the field to have better work-life balance. So when we get that call at 3 a.m., we don't have to drive into the office. We don't have to fire up our laptop. We simply pull out our phone. We hit the Web Access. We get in. We do what we need. We get out. We go back to bed. Okay, so that's the idea behind PowerShell Web Access. In this case, we're doing it just for fun because we want to you know, promote a domain controller from our phone, right? Okay. All right, it's still going. It's starting the removal of those services. And while that's uh, finishing, um, we could do some DNS real quick. I've got just a couple more minutes. Uh, anybody do DNS administration here? All right, got a few hands. Uh, anybody ever use DNS CMD? All right. Uh, DNS CMD is a real amazing tool. Uh, and so uh, over here, I've got uh, DNS CMD 
some examples for you. Uh, we've got 17 client commandlets, 100 server commandlets. Love this stuff. DNS CMD would do stuff like uh, just run it with slash info. It tells me about the server. Now I can say get dash DNS server. And it gives me a big list of all kinds of information about what is on that DNS server. And it's a long list of data. So what I'll do instead is I'm going to come down here. And enum zones. That's a favorite. Tell me all the zones that are on this box. Hey, look at that. Pretty cool. I got some forwarders on there, some automatic zones, some reverse zones. All right, I can grab all that data again, kind of format it a little differently, just using some uh, format table. Zone print, dump out the records in a zone. Hey, check this out. I'm going to dump out all the cohovineyard.com records. That's kind of handy. Then if I want to look at just the SRV domain controller records, I tell it record type SRV. All right. This is easy stuff now. Uh, I want to add a record with DNS CMD. Add one here called uh, foo. And then now I'm going to use a new commandlet, add-dns server resource record, foo2. It's going to be an A record. And here's an IP address. Here's another one called foo new. And this one says, DNS server resource record A. There's actually two different types of commandlets you can use there with uh, record type specific. Now I query get DNS server resource record in Coho Vineyard where the host name is like foo and there's my three new A records I just added. And then I can take that and pipe all that to remove DNS server resource record and it removes those records. Lickety split. All right. So that's a quick demo of the DNS side of the house. Now let's flip back over and see how our DC promo... Oh, look, it's done. Wow, check it out. So our DC promo down is finished. And we go back and look at the services that remain on that server. You'll see that the AD uh, domain services are no longer listed there. DNS is gone and all that stuff. Now we're, we've removed that domain controller from our forest using PowerShell Web Access. All right, so a couple other things here to wrap up with. I have a little handy dandy cheat sheet for you. All these things that we've talked about and a whole lot more. There's a four page uh, PDF reference that you can print out and uh, staple this up in your cube, put it up in your kids room right beside their ABCs so they can get learning PowerShell. And uh, so what this does is four pages. It shows you net DOM, IP config, NS lookup, DS get, uh, NL test, net uh, DS query, DC promo, all that stuff. It tells you where do I find the PowerShell equivalent for Active Directory. All right? And it goes into the e details of each switch. So like for rep admin here, uh, slash Q, there's a get AD replication queue operation. So it, for each switch, it'll show you where there's a parity and what you can do in PowerShell to get that. All right. And last but not least, oh, I forgot to show my slide. Yeah, I'm going to jump the shark. I, that's, you know, promoting a domain controller from your phone, that, that I think qualifies as jumping the shark. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, that's jumping the shark right there. Okay, uh, some resources to wrap up here. A URL for that guide is uh, aka.ms slash pscmdguidead. Uh, the whole blog itself, you just go to aka.ms, go tpfe. You'll see that the last post was uh, about an hour ago, and it's for PowerShell Saturday Atlanta. There's, it's right there for you guys. You've got all the scripts, the uh, download of the reference guide, and the slides. It's all there for you waiting on the blog. Okay. Uh, and if you're wanting to learn more about the Active Directory PowerShell commandlets, here are version 2, 3, and 4 of the AD commandlets documented on TechNet. You'll get that when you download the slide deck. Also, uh, if rep admin is not your friend, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about it, because it is a really handy tool, obviously. It's, it's what we do with just about everything in AD. Uh, there's a white paper that's been out there for a few years. On, it's like a tutorial on everything there is to know about rep admin. It's, it's pages and pages and pages. So that's out there for you. Also, just as a, a bonus, it's not really part of PowerShell necessarily, but 
There's a new Active Directory replication status tool that one of my buddies wrote. And you can go out there and download that. It's a really, anybody use that tool? AD replication status tool? Okay. Something else you need to be aware of. It's a free tool. You, you run this tool and it'll go find the replication errors in your environment and point you automatically to KB articles and stuff to go help fix it. Looks at event logs and all kinds of stuff. Really nice. And then finally, uh, if you'd like to keep up with me and see what else I'm putting out, um, you can follow me at, at GoTPFE on Twitter. My specialty is Active Directory and PowerShell. I've been doing it for blogging now for about three years on TechNet, uh, specifically along those lines. So uh, you can reach me through the blog. There's a contact the author, or you can get my email address off one of these business cards up here. I'd be glad to answer any questions. And I know we whipped through all of that really fast, and I got five minutes left for questions. Where can we get the slides? Are they on your blog also? Yeah, they're on the blog. Yep. And all these resources. Mm -hmm. Yep, so I've got three years of blog posts out there, everything from site links, to DNS, group policy, um, OUs, all kinds of stuff that I've blogged about with AD and PowerShell. You can go out there and uh, check those out. Um, all right, was this valuable? Yes. yes. All right. Very good. All right.